Um, first of all, you know, I, I appreciate the, the students that came out to, um, you know, for the fine game. Like, it, you know, it's awesome to see, like, how much support that they give um, for what they do. And, you know, I, I talked to one of the directors before the game and just asked, like, what, what can I do more to help you? Or as, as it gets closer, how can I help you? And, you know, I want to do everything possible. Because um, that looked awesome tonight. And I got a chance to meet a couple of the kids that came before the game and say hi to them. And, uh, you know, I hope they had a great time tonight. Like, that was a, you know, a goal of our team is uh, when people come, like I said, every single time people come to watch us play, they leave and say, that was money well spent. And I'd love to do that again. And it's easy to do with this team. It's easy to do with this team. They they earned they earned a well deserved day off tomorrow for what we just went through, right? Twenty two days from game to game and then to come back and play four in like how many, ten ten days, something like that. Like nine. Nine days. Four games in nine days. Um, that's tough. That is tough. We've been going two days. We've been going game, day between game, like film, and then right back into practice. And uh, they are, they were as locked in as shooting around today defensively as I've seen them. And I, I knew when I left there that uh, we were going to be, we were going to be ready to guard. We were going to be ready to defend. Like, it's a different story, though, right? You still got to do it. Ron Harper still makes threes. Geo Baker still tough as can be, and they have a they have a good team. They came in hot, but well, the look I saw at, at you know three o'clock today told me we, we were gonna have a pretty good day. Mike, Mike, you're you're uh, you got assistant coaches and GAs and everybody spreading their arms out. What was the message there? Because I don't think we've seen that in every game. And they were, and how important could you just build on that a little bit to play with that sort of defensive intensity against guys who have played that much Big Ten basketball? Yeah, you know what, for us, um, you know, remember when I talked about we've, when we went back and evaluated our team during those days off, one area where we were lacking was our shot volume. Like, you know, I've said it before, we were last in high major basketball and shot volume. And that was because, one, we turned the ball over too much. Two, since game three, our offensive rebounding had taken a dip. So we weren't getting as many offensive rebounds, offensive rebounds back. On the flip side of that, we've done a great job on the defensive boards, right? You know, withstanding tonight, like Cliff's tough, so so good on the glass, but they got 11 offensive, but we, we've we done a good job of keeping people off the glass, but how we play defense, we don't turn people over, right? And we, we're safe. We're going to be solid. We're going to be in position every single time, but there's a difference between being in position and standing with your arms to your side or being in position and standing there like you're covering ground. And I showed them clips or two video kind of screenshots of our Celtics teams playing the Milwaukee Bucks in the playoffs two years in a row. And the first one, Eric Bledsoe's bringing the ball down the court, and there's five guys all standing like this. Like Jason Tatum's in the opposite corner, you know, 50 feet from the ball, and he's standing there like that. There's people on the bench standing there like that. And, um, you know, our guys have really bought into it. And as you see, our numbers – we're still not turning the ball around. I think it wasn't. It was maybe the Northwestern game. I looked and I was like, we had they they had six turnovers. I was like, it felt like fifty, right? Because sometimes they drive by and we're getting our hands on the basketball and swiping it away from them. Like it happened again tonight, right? We turned them over fifteen times. Um, still being solid. We didn't change anything defensively. All we changed was this. Now I'm covering more ground. Now it looks like I'm covering more ground. Now it looks like I'm in two different places at once. And um, the more success you have at something, the more buy-in you get. And, and our guys have really taken taken a hold of that, and it's it's helped us defensively.
Um, Mike, I don't know if you remember me yesterday. I asked you about Ron Harper Jr. and you said that you could do a good job defending him if you held him to uh, more less points than he had shots, and you actually did that tonight. So how do you take this defensive success defending him into Sunday's game against EJ Liddell and, Ron, and Ohio State? Spencer, I do remember that, for one. Two, I'm not going to tell you how we're going to guard EJ Liddell <laughs> and Ohio State. <laughs> we're going to stand there with long arms. I know that's going to be a part of our plan. Now, it, it, um, I just said this on the radio. Like at the start of the year, I don't know, whenever practice started, whenever the season started, there probably wasn't anybody in here that would, you know, that was waving the Seth Lundy all defensive team flag, right? Seth Lundy has guarded the best player or one of the best players on every single team this year. And I told him tonight, and I told the guys on staff, and I take Seth out. When Ron Harper goes out of the game, Seth Lundy comes out of the game. I said, Seth, if I'm not paying attention and you see Ron Harper go in the game, get up and check yourself back in. You were guarding him the entire night. And he did. I thought he did an excellent job. Um, he is fighting. He is fighting. He's making it tough on people. His athleticism, his length, his attention to detail have all, like, that attention to detail has really improved. And, you know, I might be hurting him on the offensive end because he's exerting so much effort on the defensive end, but he's making timely threes and he's really guarding people. He is really fighting. And kudos to him. Kudos to Jalen Pickett for guarding Geo Baker in the same way. Like, those two are as scary as possible. Um, and obviously, I've been a part of it. And they beat us when I was at Purdue. I'll say maybe three straight times, uh, twice my first year and once my second year. And those guys were a huge part of it every single time. Um, so total team effort, total team effort. And, but kudos to Seth, kudos to Jalen Pickett. Now we got to do it again. We got to do it again, right? We're going to take a day off, but I don't want to stop. I don't want to stop. I want to keep playing. I wish we could play tomorrow because uh, I know our guys would be ready. They'd be ready to guard. They'd be ready to fight. And they're going to be ready to do what it, what needs to be done to win on Sunday. Mike, could Sam mentioned that he didn't put his best effort forward on Saturday. What did you see from him over the last couple of days, and what did you say to him to make sure he was locked in for tonight? I didn't really say anything to him. <laughs> he knew. Right? I didn't have to. Uh, him playing nine minutes was the message. Like, you need to be on board with what we're doing and playing as hard as possible. Right, the, the the video doesn't lie. Um, so, like what he did tonight, and I got on him, right? I, I got on him on Saturday, and that's hard to take. Like that's hard to that's hard to take when you're somebody that has been counted on. You're somebody that scored a lot, um, and now you play nine minutes, right? There's two things you can do. You can go in the locker room, and you can be a, a a locker room lawyer, and you can go to somebody else that didn't play and, and, and start talking like, hey, man, how come you didn't play? I didn't play either. Yeah, his coach is doing a terrible job. If we'd have played, we might have won. Or you can come back and fix it, right? You can take ownership. You can look inside. Right? That says a lot about his character, who he is as a person, his resiliency um, to just bounce back and play. And he played with more force. He played with more pace. He was attacking the basket. And we're really hard to guard when he and Pickett are both playing like that at the same time. You talk about Sam Sessoms, and obviously um, he comes in today, puts up a strong performance after Purdue. What does it say about him to do that in late game situations? I think we still need to be better late game. But um, – he puts so much pressure on the defense because of the way he gets to the rim. We've our numbers. If you look at our numbers, we've been good at scoring around the rim. Part of that is because he gets in there a lot. And he makes those tough shots. Um, but he also forces the, the defense to come and help. He can drop it off for a lob. He can put it up on the glass and have a shot blocker go try and get it. Now John's free to get offensive rebounds you know, and whatnot. So we need him. Like the pressure he puts on the defense, the, the spacing that our guys try and play with to give him room to drive the basketball, um, it, it helps our offense. When you can play with multiple ball handlers, multiple guys that can play off pick and rolls, 
um, the better your offense will be. And, you know, that, that was – tonight was a chance. You know, we got to see both of them out there together, both of them kind of clicking at different times throughout the game. But both of them were going. Now you're worried about both of them. Mike, uh, we, we saw Giovanni Scott uh, for the first time uh, on the court. What were kind of your, your initial impressions of his, I guess, his debut, and how do you kind of see his role uh, going forward from, yeah. from now? I was happy for him, man. I was uh, – I always, I always say stuff. Like, I spent four years with Coach Painter, so I always say stuff that, like, um, he says all the time. But I said in the locker room, I was excited. I was like, Jelani, you got your name in the paper? Like, you know, the old school paper, right? You, you flip the page back to B8 or B9, and it's got the, the names back there in the back. Penn State, you know, uh, Hare, 16, Dread, 2, Scott, 2. Like, he, he got his name in the paper, man. I'm fired up for that kid. Like, what he's done um, to put himself in position to help us. And then I just told him to go in and play as hard as possible. Play as hard as possible. Don't mess up defensively. <laughs> That's pretty tough to do, right? But don't mess up defensively and uh, give us everything we got. I knew we'd be tired, right? And he, he's been itching to play, um, so the opportunity to play, right? When he comes and there's you know there's fans there, it's excitement. You know, he's probably gassed, but he gave us a good spark in the first half. He played hard, and then he gave us a little spark in the second half. And got a bucket, and uh, you know we'll get him knock those free throws in too. Because have four, because says Scott four in, on page B nine tomorrow. Micah, uh, I, I guess in, in, in analysis, sometimes you hear people talk about winning games different ways. Is is that something that you you think about and, and view as important? And if so, why? You know what? I like winning the game the same way, right? How we play shouldn't change from night to night, from opponent to opponent. Um, like, I was thrilled. We shot 38% in the first half and went into halftime up eight. Like, the ball doesn't need to go in for us to win and have success. And that's who we are. That's who we are. Our guys are buying into that. Our guys are, are if we defend like that each and every night, we're going to give ourselves a chance. Um, we got to get better. We got to get better. You know, we were, we worked the other day on closing halves, starting halves better, right? We closed it four to three today, and we had one turnover, but we started the second half pretty poor. Uh, so that's something that we're going to get back to work at. Uh, but the way we defend, if you do that, you give yourself a chance. And I love it. I love it. If, if we could, I mean, there might not be anybody here to watch. But if we could win four to two, I'd be thrilled. I'd be thrilled. Our defensive numbers would be awesome. <laughs> what, what, what are the challenges of kind of maintaining a, a 10 point ish lead and not giving that away and building on it actually towards the close? Yeah, that's, um, you know, that's when the pressure sets in of like, do you keep attacking? Or do you like, you know, pull the reins back a little bit? Like, I want us to keep attacking. We got some stops and we were going in transition and like keep doing it. As long as we don't turn it over, um, I'm okay with it. And then at a certain point, you know, we start to put the brakes up. You know, they get the double stop signs. Like, ah, we're going to want some clock right here. Um, but, you know, like I said, it goes back to having two guys that can handle the basketball um, and run your offense. And now it, kind of takes away what they do in terms of how they guard you late. Um, you know, because if they trap one, you can throw it to the other and vice versa. So um, that's a challenge. For us to be able to hold that lead was great and to play like that. Like it's, it doesn't, right? It doesn't feel good. Like you're just looking at the clock. I'm just looking at it the whole time. And the only thing in my mind is like Chris Berman. It's like tick, 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 tick. Like I'm just like, come on, baby. Let's get this thing moving. Uh, but I thought our guys did a great job of knowing when to attack and knowing when to slow down, run offense, run the clock a little bit. Your last question. Uh, Micah, you said that the guys kind of had a fire in their eye around 3 o'clock coming into this game. What did you see from them when you guys jumped out to that 18-6 to 6 start? I mean, same kind of thing. Like, we, they, the shots that they took to start the game were the shots that we want people to take, right? Like, we... 
don't know, it's no secret. Like, um, we try and force you into long two-pointers. And, like, we, we keep our shell intact defensively. Um, you know, we stay in front of the ball, and then we try and contest you when you shoot a long two-pointer. And to start the game, they took a bunk load of them, right? They just kept shooting, kept shooting, kept shooting. And I was like, this is great. Right? They make them, though. Geo Baker's one of the best in our league at making those. But over time, people don't make those shots. They don't. I, I've got data from the NBA all the way back into college. Like People don't make those shots consistently, and they don't beat you. Um, and they were taking the shots that we wanted them to take. So we felt pretty good about how we were guarding early in the game, which gave us some confidence.